So for this part, like, because it Do we need to go into why you need a side band? We could, we could do whatever we want. Because as you know, you know, as you're, if I just stay in left bend and front bend, I wind up over here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to convert, the left bend has to be converted into right bend. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm not going to talk anymore off camera. <laughs> We're going straight in, one take one. Okay. All right, Milo, so let's talk about how to start the downswing and what the upper body does. And there's a couple pieces that we want to talk about, kind okay. of macro motions. Perfect. Well, earlier we talked about how the lower body reflexes. Yeah. The upper body does the same thing. You're gaining a little bit of bend this way yep. in transition. Yeah. Your pelvis is reflexing. Everything's reflexing. Yep. And then it quickly bounces from reflexing into right side bending. Love it. Okay. And so, and for those who don't know, right in here, okay. if you're standing straight up and down, right, mm -hmm. a, a reflexing would be your upper body bending down towards the ground, right? Bending over more. It's a simple term. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The second part of that is obviously there's a tilt here, right? Or there's a side bend. Mm -hmm. And so as you start your downswing, the, yeah, exactly. So there's a, there's a, what can, can, can we say maintenance of left side bend? Yeah, it's probably maintained. Just to start. And I'm gaining a little bit of flexion in my pelvis. So yes. I'm, I'm bending from here a little bit just to start. And so this left side and left shoulder is staying lower in early transition. Mm -hmm. And then as we go, there's gonna be this right side bend. It's gonna be introduced. Yep. That would be kind of the second phase of it, right? If exactly. the flexing part is part one, this is happening at the same time. Yeah, it's all happening simultaneous and it's pretty quick, but. Yeah, I like to break it up for <laughs> it's, a bit. It's what's happening. It's reflexing, it's left side bend, left shoulder staying lower, and then right side bend would be kind of part two. Mm -hmm. And then there's gonna be a turn. Yes. But the turn part isn't really independent, is it? No, the turn is not coming from the, the upper body. The turn is coming from down below. Yeah, right. So the, 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 the downswing starting from the lower body pieces we talked about, that's really what's causing the torso to do the turning. Yeah. So there's three things going on. There's the flexing, there's the side bend, there's the turning component. Mm -hmm. Now, before we dive into feels and drills and how to go through these, guys, let's take a look at a couple good players and show you how they do these three motions. Okay, Milo, so part number one, as I start down with my upper body, reflexing, let's talk about some feels. Right from the top, I'm feeling my, my belt buckle lowering, reflexing. I'm feeling my upper body reflexing as I start down in terms of that part. Yeah. Does that sound about that right? sounds about exactly Check right. Mark. And so as I'm doing this, right, as I'm hitting balls, again, if I already do this, no big deal, but if I don't, and I wanna start to feel, I can start with something as simple as that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You'll probably hit the first couple shots fat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then learn how to match some other And then learn how to match the other pieces with what your hands do. Yeah. So let's do one here with those two feels. Belt buckle and chest down. I know you like a little shorter and slower to start with. Let's see what I can do. Belt buckle, chest down. Yeah, good. And that was a little heavy, right? Yep. And so, and that's to be expected for me in the beginning. If I'm going to actually get lower, I got to make some adjustments. Yeah, you're going to have more extension in your right wrist and a little more bend in your arm. So yeah to so match my, that up like this let's do one more so belt buckle how do i start my downswing belt buckle points down towards the ground notice my lead leg going external by itself as i do that it's another conversation chest is working closer to the ground as i go down let's go ahead and do one like that belt buckle and chest reflexing yeah mm, good that was good so that would be part number one now let's pause for a second. Let's talk about the second we, part uh, we talked about, about the, the side bend. Okay, Milo, so part number two beyond the flexion part would be the side bends. Um, so let's kind of talk through that from the top of the back swing. How do I start my down? So I know we have kind of left side bend and a right okay. side bend. So as we start our down swing, 
there's a lot of stuff happening down below and I need to add in some right side bend fairly quickly so that I don't wander my body way over here. Because if I just stayed in front bend and left bend, I wind up too far out in front. So as we change directions, now I'm, you can start to see I'm getting some crunch up here in my right side, which is keeping me centered up yeah, on exactly. top of the ball. So when you, so I think two things for someone who doesn't know, side bend in a simple term being shoulder and hip closer together. Yep. Is that fair? And so that action that's happening, if you go to the top of the swing again, I love those visuals. Now, already your lead shoulder is lower than your trail shoulder, yes. right? And already your lead side of your pelvis is lower. Mm -hmm. When you, what we're saying here is when you do the transition pieces with your lead side of the pelvis, that lead shoulder is going to stay lower in early transition mm -hmm. as a reaction to that. And to not have your upper body go so far forward towards the target. If I stayed in left tilt, you'd see I'd be way over here. So immediately I bounced into more of a right side bend to keep me centered up. So from, so love that. So in terms of the feels from the upper body, that lead side, that lead, let's flip flop spots. That lead side, please. That lead side of the sh or shoulder being lower than the right is gonna maintain that a little bit from my lower body action. The sensations or the feels, right, of what we're doing is gonna be adding in the right side bend component. Yes. And there could be various feels for that, but the trail shoulder and trail hip uh, getting closer together, uh -huh. right? And so let's say I'm the player who overdoes the left side bend has the no uh, trail side, no, no side bend. So they're here and they do get this part. Okay. Right? I'm that player. And I want to try and fix that. Am I starting off from the top here like this? Just kind of getting a feel. I'm, I'm almost going to feel this yes. as an exaggeration. Matched with what the lower the body is supposed to. There you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we, if we just looked at that and I have too much of here, I would feel my right shoulder getting close to my right hip. Now in reality, mixed with what I currently do and my other pieces, that's gonna keep me- That keeps you centered. Pretty centered. So yeah. right shoulder and right hip getting closer together as I'm doing my flexing and turning part. So my belt buckle and chest go down towards the ground, my right shoulder and my right hip get closer together. Yep. Can we kind of put those as part that's, one and part two? That's perfect. So let's go ahead and do one here with that. And again, I'm not, you know, depending upon what I'm currently doing, I'm not maybe thinking about all this at one time, but just for the sake of uh, examples, that feels really good and athletic. Belt buckle and chest down, right hip getting closer to my right shoulder in early transition. Let's go ahead and do one. Right hip and right shoulder closer, chest down. Yeah, and that feels really good and really athletic. And even though I'm putting effort into thinking about doing it, it feels effortless, if you will, okay. and kind of natural and athletic which is right up your alley. That's what I do. And so that is the second part, the side bend. Let's break here for a second again, and then we'll talk a little bit about the rotation piece. Okay, Milo, so part number three here, we said uh, the flexing, mm -hmm. the side bend, and the rotation. Yes. And I think we can kind of put a bow on this one and keep it pretty simple in that uh, the upper body rotation pieces, assuming nothing else, are, are pretty much primarily happening because of the lower body pieces. For sure, in transition, the the upper body is not rotating on its own yet. So it's rotating because of what the lower body's done. Yeah, yeah. So it's not as though like, if you were to go up to the top again, I'm holding your pelvis and you're like, open it, you're right. So, no. So the, any upper body rotation that's going on, that rib cage rotation, torso rotation, is a byproduct of, of what the lower body is, yes. is doing. And so, you know, I think with these things, I don't think we gotta do much more on that. I think with these things, the idea is, hey, here's what's going on. It's these three pieces. Work with a coach to find out which one or all three of those someone would need more of and kind of why, and learn how to put the pieces together while having some feels, you know, right? The, the feeling of the flexing and the, the chest getting more down, the belt buckle down, mm -hmm. the feeling of the right shoulder and the right hip kind of getting closer together and turning. And now they really all go together, right? Yeah, it's what's happening in order for me to be able to turn and stay more or less centered yep. and stay in my inclinations, those are all things that have to happen. Yeah. 